Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for joining us here. Many of us likely know someone living with polycystic kidney disease, also known as PKD, and not even know it. Well, joining us this morning in honor of PKD Awareness Day, which is coming up on uh, September the 4th, is Dr. Mion Park. Uh, joining us here from University of California, San Francisco. Welcome to the program, Dr. Park. Thank you so much. Now, I understand that you're, uh, you're joining us here on behalf of uh, Oska America Pharmaceutical Incorporated. Is that correct? Yes. Thanks for the opportunity to speak to you today about polycystic kidney disease. Well, give us a, a bit of your background, if you wouldn't. Then let's talk about uh, PKD. Sure. I am a nephrologist or kidney specialist who cares for many individuals who are affected by this condition, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. This is a, a disease that affects the, the kidneys exclusively, yeah? Actually, that's not exactly true. It's the primary site that autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease affects is the kidney, of course, as you can tell by the name of the disease. But in fact, it's a systemic condition that can cause cysts to form in many organs, but primarily the kidneys, causing the kidney function to diminish over time. Well, let's put it into perspective for our listeners who may not be familiar with kidney function intimately. Talk about the role that our kidneys play in our overall health. Yes, the kidneys are a crucial organ that clean our blood, filter all of the substances that are important for our blood, and regulate our blood pressure. So they're very important organs that we need for our health. Now, this this genetic disorder, PKD, um, who does it affect um, mainly? Sure. So this particular genetic condition is a little unusual for a genetic condition in that it actually can affect any background, any ethnicity or race, mm -hmm. and both sexes, men and women. You say this normally will lead to uh, kidney failure if untreated? Is this something that people live with for a long time before it's diagnosed? And is it misdiagnosed? Sure. So, in fact, it is the fourth leading cause of kidney failure in the United States and the leading inherited cause of kidney failure. That doesn't mean that everyone will reach kidney failure. And because it is such a varied condition in different families and in individuals, the progression can be different for uh, different individuals. Uh, depending on one's background and kidney function and kidney sizes, there are different man management strategies that a physician might recommend to a patient. So what type of um, symptoms should one be looking for, both in the patient and in the physician, and how is it diagnosed? Yes. So the most important symptom that can sometimes develop, including in people who don't have a family history of this condition, is high blood pressure. So that's one of the first symptoms that we'll check for. Some Individuals will be diagnosed by kidney imaging or abdominal imaging that's pursued for some other reason. For example, if somebody has a kidney stone or has different types of pain in their abdomen that requires imaging studies. But it depends a little bit on whether or not someone has a family history as to whether they will seek a diagnosis when they have not had any symptoms. Does it present at an average age? Is that something that maybe we could start testing for at a certain age? Is it, is it that type of uh, genetic disease? Yeah, so most individuals are diagnosed in their 20s or 30s, although it can be detected at later stages. Using a genetic test to make the diagnosis is not usually the way that this condition is diagnosed. And even in families in whom it's known that it's passed generation to generation, we don't tend to use genetic testing for a variety of reasons. Although in certain cases, uh, particularly for kidney transplant evaluation, for example, genetic testing may become important. 
it's not generally what's used initially for diagnosis, uh, which can be done by imaging studies as simple as a kidney ultrasound. When do you seek uh, help from a physician for whatever kid, uh, whatever symptoms that you, you're having? Sure. So I think it's important to make sure that you are being seen by a physician to make sure that your blood pressure is in a good range and for basic blood and urine tests to evaluate kidney health. I'm not sure whether awareness about urinary frequency or um, or different features of the urine are ways that are very reliable to make recommendations. So Mm -hmm. being evaluated by a physician or or medical professional is important for any of these symptoms. So the symptoms could vary from person to person just as um, the need for further diagnosis as well. It's an individual type of thing. Correct. Correct. Definitely. Well, let's talk a bit about uh, management strategies uh, for people once they are diagnosed. Sure. So Depending on the stage of the kidney function and the size of the kidney cysts, there are different management strategies that may be important. And that will also depend on the individual and that individual's characteristics as to which strategy would be most beneficial. What would you say is, I guess, the number one strategy or maybe the the go-to strategy for someone with PKD or uh, ADPKD? I think... Being in the care of a physician who is familiar with the condition is extremely important, and that individual would be able to guide the patient's uh, treatment over many decades, depending on the circumstances. Well, our listeners would like to get some more information. Where can we go online and uh, get that information on uh, ADPKD? Sure. Visit www.pkdinfo.com for more information. Well, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio this morning, Dr. Park. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Same here. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com. Health Professional Radio.